Hey, what's going on guys? Mush back at it with another video. I want to highlight a bunch of the RTX 3090 and 3080 specifications being leaked. It seems like people are losing sleep waiting for these GPUs to finally come out as they're looking for upgrades on top of that. Very interesting stats about NVIDIA and the GPU market. We'll go over that in an article on PC Gamer. And Humble is running a pretty good sale the end of summer sale 2020. Kind of funny how they do that. Steam does their big summer sale and Humble does the end of summer sale, which I think is super smart. I don't think you should ever... Uh, plan big sales to correlate with other platforms having big sales. Nevertheless, we'll talk that at the end of this video. First up, over on video cards, super reputable site. According to our sources, NVIDIA is set to launch three SKUs in September. RTX 3090, 24 gigabytes. RTX 3080, 10 gigabytes. And RTX 3070, 8 gigabytes. That's such a big discrepancy between the 3090 and the 3080, 24 to 10 gigabytes. However, the 3090 is going to be a super premium GPU, so just bear that in mind. We have learned that board partners are also preparing a second variant of the 3080 featuring twice the memory 20 gigabyte however that model is yet tba and might launch at a later date this post is only about the 3090 and 3080 with geforce rtx ampere nvidia introduces second generation ray tracing cores and third generation tensor cores the new cards will also support pci express 4.0 so that's a pretty big deal Additionally, Ampere supports HDMI 2.1, which is gaining a lot of traction recently. However, uh, pretty expensive to get into that. And DisplayPort 1.4a display connectors. 3090 features GA102300 GP with 5,248 CUDA cores. And then 24 gigabytes of GDDR6X memory across the 384-bit uh, bus. This gives maximum theoretical bandwidth of 936 gigabytes per second. On the other hand, the 3080 gets 4,352 CUDA cores and 10 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory. This card will have a maximum bandwidth of 760 gigabytes per second. The 3070 is also set to launch at the end of next month unless there's some change. They confirmed 8 gigabytes of GDDR6 for that. That's non-X memory and the memory speed is estimated at 16 gigabytes per second and uh, 220 watts. That's pretty good all things considered for a 3070. The CUDA core specs are still up in the air. So good to see us getting some clarity on these GPUs. Obviously, these are going to be premium GPUs. And if you're interested in either of these GPUs, it's much like the next generation consoles. You really got to be on your toes and making sure that you pre-order it right when it goes live because it's going to be a hot item and people will probably be, you know, reselling it on secondary markets and things of that nature. So just be on your toes and you should be able to get one no problem. Remember, it wasn't too difficult for me to get like a 970 on launch. I just had to be on my toes and, you know, not waiting more than a couple of hours and things of that nature. Okay, moving on from that, sticking to the graphics cards talk. NVIDIA GPUs now account for 80% of the PC market. NVIDIA reportedly has 80% of the discrete PC GPU market, John Petty Research claims. So this is a pretty big deal. That's, uh, that was reported by John Petty uh, Research Reports and uh, posted on video cards. The green team has reportedly claimed another 5% of the GPU market from AMD since the beginning of 2020. That's a massive, massive percentage. I know on paper 5% doesn't sound like a lot, but think about it. Out of, you know, let's say 1 in 20 people have converted from AMD to NVIDIA. That's a significant portion of people going with the NVIDIA side it could also theoretically mean that NVIDIA themselves have uh, sold so many GPUs and a lot of people that are new consumers to PC GPUs that they just went with NVIDIA graphics cards. It doesn't necessarily have to mean that AMD is losing ground in terms of their total amount of fans and people using their GPUs, although theoretically you would think something like that would be happening. However, they do note it's not that AMD's Radeon sales are on the decline per se, but that NVIDIA is outpacing it in discrete GPU sales of the report states. I don't know if this is something to look into. However, I know when the pandemic struck and people got their stimulus checks, dude, I had so many people hitting me up to buy a video or not even a video card to just buy a PC. They were like, okay, I'm ready to get into PC gaming. And they were going to spend their entire $1,200 getting their PC. And this is just anecdotal, but not a single one of those people were down to use an AMD GPU. They all wanted an NVIDIA graphics card. And it's not like I... Didn't even try to tell them, oh, there's some benefits, you know, XYZ GPU is a really good value or whatever, but yeah, they all ended up getting an NVIDIA GPU. I don't know if that had anything to do with it. That's just a little bit of anecdotal interpretation that I have for you guys, but it is something to consider. I do think PC sales have been up uh, recently due to like the stim check, people just staying indoors wanting something to do, so... NVIDIA having 80% of the market share is kind of insane, though. Uh, it really would 
behoove consumers if AMD either gain some ground in market share or if Intel, you know, one of these years do actually come out with their discrete GPUs, which seems like has been talked about for quite a while. But that's something very interesting. And, you know, it would be great for all of us if NVIDIA honestly started losing some ground and somebody else, you know, got 30, 40, 50 percent on the market share, because what that would just mean is lower prices and like promotions and things of that nature. They would be very aggressive in securing big games like a Cyberpunk promotion or a Battlefield promotion promotion or whatever game is coming out you guys get the idea Lastly, I do want to note that there's an end of summer sale over on Humble right now. Some really good deals present as a part of this, notably Sega and EA titles. I saw like a way out for like $2 and change. Yakuza 0 down to 5 bucks, Vanquish down to 5 bucks, Valkyria Chronicles 4 down to like $16.79, Sonic Adventure 2 down to $2.49, just some really good deals. Valkyria Chronicles 1 super cheap. EA has a way out, super, super cheap. Uh, Battlefield 5, pretty cheap. Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order is down to 3184 So a lot of good deals are present as a part of this. Dragon Age 2, down to just $3.63. A lot of these games can be playable with EA Access, but I know a lot of you guys are, again, subscription services, so I did want to make note of this sale running. I'll leave a link in the description box below. Of course, if you do use my link, I get a little bit of a kickback on anything that you do end up buying, so that's much appreciated. But that's going to conclude this video, guys. Again, let me know your thoughts on 3090 and 3080 RTX 3090 and 3080 GPUs you plan on picking up or are you going to wait for cheaper options Nvidia GPUs now account for 80% of the market share and a great uh, summer sale end of summer sale I should say over on Humble that's going to conclude this video sound off with all of your thoughts in the comment section down below thank you for watching and goodbye Hey, what's going on, guys? Mush here again. Hope you enjoyed the video. As you guys might know, YouTube's notification system is sometimes a little bit wonky, even if you're subscribed to the channel. Maybe you're not abundantly aware that I uploaded a video to remedy that situation. Make sure you hit the bell notification button. This way, whenever I upload a new video and I try to upload as consistently as possible, you will be notified directly of the upload and you can watch it as soon as it goes live. I would really appreciate if you guys hit that button so you can stay up to date with all of the content I'm posting. But as always, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.